You are tuning in to the human side of engineering and product development podcast, brought to you by Sarah Tech, where we bring you industry leaders and some of the brightest minds in engineering solutions and product development. I'm Andy Dio, your host. Join me as we discover the inspiring stories of the people behind the most innovative and game-changing solutions in the market today. So tune in and enjoy. Good morning and welcome to the podcast. Today I have with me Sasan Kubriari. Sasan is the senior manager of the Center of Excellence that handles PLM solutions at Saratech. Welcome to the podcast, Sasan. How are you? Hi, Andy. It was nice uh, to get together and uh, have a, uh, a quick chat. I know, right? Especially during the pandemic, we don't really see each other in the office or anything. We just see each other once in a while. So it's, it's nice to have uh, have some time together, to just have a conversation. So thank you for being on here. Yeah, definitely. So I know that you graduated from University of Michigan. So you must be pretty excited that they are in the national championship playoff. Oh, it's 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 been an awesome season uh, for us uh, this uh, this year, and uh, every game is very exciting. And especially uh, when we have some very important games that uh, we were able to uh, come as a winner, and it's going to be a good year. So definitely uh, watching all the games uh, this season. Yeah, I, I think Jim Harbaugh has been doing a really good job, you know, bringing that program around. I know for the past few years before he actually did it, the knock on him was, hey, how come he can't beat Ohio State, right? So when he finally <laughs> did it, and this year you guys just destroyed them. So you, you guys got to be pretty happy. Oh, that's it. That's huge. It's been, it's been for years uh, that uh, he wanted to do that. And I remember when I was at school uh, attending the games and the one year I was with my son and actually that year also we beat Ohio State and we all went to this right to the field and it was just a very exciting time being at the stadium doing that but for many years we were waiting for for this to happen so i'm really glad <laughs> yeah well i i went to uc irvine and we didn't even have a football team so that <laughs> that college football experience i we never had that at uci so i'm a little bit jealous that oh. you know you you went to school and had that experience especially when you go to a school that has a really good football team so yeah, congratulations not only, not only that but then the, the michigan big house is just an experience that definitely yeah, oh, uh, i uh, 113 or 115,000 people get together. It's just uh, amazing. I, I can I can only imagine. I, I've <laughs> never been into experience like that. So but good. you are now, you are now in Southern California. Is that right? Yeah, I've been here for a year now, and uh, I joined Saratech about two years ago, exactly in December, uh, uh, and uh, uh, it's been it's been awesome. So it's, uh, at some point, I work remotely, uh, and now. I move, relocated to Southern California, be close to the headquarter and, and be able to meet uh, the people at the local uh, office. It's been uh, definitely an awesome experience. Oh, great. Now, in, in your career, you worked at some, you know, pretty big companies, right? Uh, so you worked at Four, you worked at uh, Space System Laurel, and you know, you have always been in IT or PLM or, or management. How how did you get um, into engineering? What what uh, what drove your interest? Do you remember? Well, when when I was doing my uh, graduate school, I I focused on uh, finite element analysis uh, as my thesis, and had to write some software codes in order to simulate uh, some of the CA analysis, and that's where I got into programming and coding in the engineering field. And also, I was, I was working at school uh, doing Fortran programming for some of the offices as as uh, supporting myself through graduate school as well. Uh, and that really got me into computer coding. And my first job was actually at uh, uh, in Boston uh, working on uh, Prime Computer, Computer Vision. Uh, Prime Computer, <laughs> I remember. That's back in the day. I'm dating myself now. So that was my first <laughs> job working at the uh, assembly modeling group. Uh, uh, because of my mechanical engineering background and my some of my computer skills, uh, uh, seemed like I was the right candidate to get involved with uh, with more of a CAD CAM in the CAD CAM industry because they wanted to have engineering uh, engineers actually design the solutions for engineers. 
So that's where I got involved. And, uh, and then, uh, after a few years, I, uh, moved to Michigan. I worked for four more company and that's where I was supporting, uh, cat, uh, cats five, which was, uh, one of the, uh, solutions then. Yes. I remember um, cats five and yeah. then uh, ideas and metaphase and start, you know, from there went through the whole journey on the PLM, uh, evolutions with Ford, uh, uh knowledge based engineering and PLM for, for over uh, near 20 years. Uh, so it's been definitely very exciting, uh, uh being, being in the product and manufacturing, uh, large global organization and see a lot of the end to end solutions, uh, and going through multiple journeys of, uh, automation and, uh, digital transformation. Yeah. So PLM obviously stands for product life cycle management, right? So it's, it's a whole process of not just idealization, but many, you know, the process of developing an entire product and the parts that a lot of people forget about is, is, you know, the end after the product is released, you still have to maintain and, and, you know, control that. Um, what are some misconceptions that people have about PLM? Do you think, Sasan? Because well, it's such a huge, huge area, right? Yeah. The first thing is uh, PLM uh, is not really an IT initiative. It's a business process transformation initiative. And that's something that the CIOs need to really connect and pair up with the CEO and executive in the company to uh, understand that this is a core business transformation initiative and not see it as a system or IT solutions like other like deploying any other uh, software applications uh, yeah. it really goes to the core of the business processes and uh, the uh, the whole digital strategy around it uh, because uh, that feeds into many other enterprise pro level processes and really required to have uh, that understanding at the get go so that's primarily one of the misconceptions that they they see it as an IT a system installation or deployment rather than business process transformation. Yeah, I, I think that's a really good point. It, it really connects to all of the different organizations between a, a, a company, right? It's, it's not just something that IT or the engineering team handle. It, it really connects all of the different businesses. Right. Um, and, and it's a very important initiative when you're looking into um, implementing or improving how you uh, work when it comes to product development, right? Um, but, you know, with that being said, I think another misconception that I've come across or, or, or hear a lot about is that people think, oh, PLM, that's just for the big guys, you know? Um, we're, we're too small. We're not, we, we, we can't get involved in that. It's just too costly. It's too expensive. Uh, have you heard that as, as well on your end when you talk to customers? Well, uh, yes. In the past, it was like that. Actually, Saratech, we are helping a lot of the startups and small, uh, smaller organizations to get into PDM and PLM capabilities. Uh, maybe 20 years ago, 15 years ago, when it started at uh, GM, Ford, Boeing, and those large companies actually created and invented those PLM, PDM capabilities. Uh, that was the case. But now with uh, Siemens uh, PLM uh, solution sets with Team Center, uh, they have uh, multiple levels of uh, capabilities that really makes it very uh, easy and low cost for uh, smaller companies to get into. And we have done that for many, many countries, over 100 uh, different companies that we have implemented PLM uh, so far, and they're in all different sizes. We had companies with uh, two or three users all the way to uh, thousands of users. So the, definitely Siemens have uh, been able to uh, develop a different uh, levels of uh, entry into the PDM and PLM capabilities that allows uh, the companies to get into uh, and really grow from there because any, any smaller companies that start with that, they, uh, they're going to grow and they, they need that uh, kind of foundation to manage their processes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think, and also the technology has advanced so much since, you know, the early nineties. I mean, P the PLM concept started in the mid eighties and, and the technology just keep on advancing. And, and now, um, it's really for everybody, isn't it? It's, it's not just for the big guy anymore. 
Right. The idea is that with the web enabled uh, user interface, it makes it very easy to use and it's very intuitive. Uh, and it's all about your uh, document management, uh, CAD data management and, and, and approval process, release process. And all of that is kind of uh, very much uh, uh, built and designed into uh, Siemens Team Center uh, system that uh, really aligns with engineering and manufacturing operations because it's been evolved over many years, uh, built for engineering uh, manufacturing organizations. Anyone who would develop the product, they definitely can advan- take advantage of the capabilities. Yeah, um, I think going back to misconception, I, I think another mi- big misconception is that you know, hey, if I implement a, if I implement a PDM or PM system, it's gonna it's gonna fix my process. But if you start it with a broken process, no tool, no technology is gonna is gonna fix your broken process, right? Sure. Yeah, we definitely have uh, established a series of lessons learned for our uh, organization we get involved with. Uh, Of course, uh, as I mentioned, understanding PLM, which is a um, a process transformation initiative, uh, having a a executive sponsorship is very important. The uh, the IT executives, as well as the uh, product and manufacturing executives and CEO really need to work very closely and, and work as a partners. Uh, it's not an IT initiative. It's not a CIO's uh, only initiative. It's really about uh, yeah. product and manufacturing executives to be engaged. Establishing a very core technical team, uh, we call process owners or subject matter experts, to really start talking about business processes and how they want to transform and change it. Not really focus on IT solutions or the application, but really uh, talk about business processes. And then... Uh, with flexibility and capabilities that comes with Siemens uh, Team Center, uh, any type of processes or integrations is possible. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that's that's part of the challenge too, right? So we we've all have heard about the um, horrible failures of PLM implementation. People put, you know hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars into uh, deploying and implementing PLM, but see no return or, or it end up just being used as a, a, you know, glorified data manager, right? Yeah, like a, a vault, uh, uh, that type of a deal. So what do you think is the approach um, a company should take when they look into implementing PLM, where should they start so that it's, it's not, it, it doesn't become a, a huge project that's getting overcomplicated and end up being, um, you know, just, just a total failure. Well, sometimes we see the companies are trying to do too much at the same time altogether. And that really put a lot of pressure on the organization, because as I said, uh, the involvement of ing- process owners, engineers on different levels and integration between applications are really key and important. So for that reason, we, we work with the organizations to put together a roadmap. It might be a two year or three year roadmap and we walk them through what, uh, what are the maturity levels that, uh, organization can go through in PLM. And we start from uh, data management, change management, configuration management and really walk them through uh, what makes sense to evolve into uh, higher levels of PLM uh, maturity. And then, uh, so that, that's the key is really to um, have a good roadmap, not try to do too much at, at the same time. And then uh, and make sure that all key organizations are really involved in developing and deploying the process re-engineering effort that's going on and they feel ownership uh, of of that initiative, and they don't see it as one organization or only one uh, IT organization responsibilities. Right, right. I I think that's that's very important. Right. It's it's getting all of the different organizations to buy in and and understand the the benefits that they will get from deployment of a PLM system. Of course, I think in the beginning, like. Anytime you roll out new software, new tools within an organization, there's going to be a slight dip. 
in productivity when people are still trying to learn a new system that they're trying to get up to speed. Uh, but I think in, in the long run, uh, it's, it's, it's going to pay off 10 times, if, if not more, don't you think? Definitely. And, and what, what I've done in the last, you know, previous companies when implemented large initiative, uh, uh, organization change management was a key. We really had a good uh, sponsorship from the CEO and the VPs of product and manufacturing. Uh, and uh, we were giving monthly reviews as well as uh, uh, we were cascading information on a regular basis to the organization that what's coming, what changes are coming in, and, and really prepare the organization for the changes that are coming in. And then the training and hand-holding and, uh, and really supporting uh, the users uh, post-go-live uh, is really key for user adoption. Yeah, yeah. And um, you, you had mentioned organization maturity or PLM maturity. Um, can you expand a little bit more on that? I, I know, you know, not everybody when it comes to, um, you know, how they use data, how they, how they, they create products are at the same level, right? Is that what you mean by maturity? Where, where are they at in, in that, in that cycle, in that process? Right. The, the maturity starts, uh, you know, the, the PLM has a definition from level zero to level five. They, mm. they actually define the maturity and there are definitions for it. But mainly uh, the level zero when the organization is managing their product data in a very ad hoc basis and there's no, mm. uh, no structure around it. Uh, level of security or uh, the change management is really very uh, ad hoc. And then you start getting into your uh, CAD data management, document management. And putting together some uh, change management capabilities, and that's where you start getting into level one. And then, as 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 you kind of mature your e bomb and manufacturing bomb, and uh, start integrating with uh, your other enterprise solutions such as manufacturing execution systems or um, ERP, then you start moving into that level. You know, different levels of organizations, and then there are so many of the capabilities that are built into your. Uh, initial platform of PLM on, uh, on schedule manager and requirement management and system engineering. And that's where you start moving into uh, model based system engineering and, and such, uh, in the, in the higher levels. So you need the basic foundation with your PLM capabilities and start building on top of that. And Siemens, um, uh, team center has really provided a very good platform. Uh, that you start bringing all of that the capabilities together, integrated in one environment. Yeah, good point. Good point. Thanks for that explanation. Uh, now let's talk a little bit about um, there's. I don't, I don't want to call it new, but the, the 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 exciting buzzword right now that's that's around our industry is digital twin. Right? Um, can you can you explain to our audience what what is a digital twin? Sure. The concept of digital twin was actually defined by Dr. Michael Greaves back in 2003. And, uh, and it's really about three main parts. It's about uh, physical products in real space, uh, virtual products in virtual space, and the connected data that tie the physical and virtual product together. Uh, so digital twin uh, are virtual uh, replicas of physical devices that are uh, uh, kind of bring it together with your digital environments and uh, and really digital twin technology is moving beyond just uh, manufacturing into uh, different things like in, in, uh, into manufacturing floors, bringing the actual information into your uh, digital environment in the engineering side and uh, start bringing in uh, the inner, inner, inner of things, uh, the artificial intelligence and data analytics all together. Yeah, so it's it's an exciting concept, isn't it? Having having your product in a digital form, a true digital form, not just a pretty picture, but you know, data that you can um, can do something with, right? Uh, and and creating a, a better process or a better workflow for your engineers and and for your analysts and the entire organization, all the way down to manufacturing. Now, looking at that. So <clears throat> if we're moving from, not that we're moving from one step to another, but if, if we talk about PLM, 
and the complications and, and, you know, the history of PLM, do you think people buy in or believe that the digital twin um, concept can be realized? The uh, Siemens digital uh, twin or digital threat solution really providing a very good uh, roadmap uh, and pathway to to achieve digital digital twin. And really starts with, again, we talked about the PLM maturity level. So start with mm-hmm. your level one, two, three, and start moving into uh, different components of the digital twin. There are several, several uh, like seven digital threads that are defined by uh, uh, digital twin at, uh, at uh, Siemens. And it really starts with uh, establishing a foundation, which Team Center provides that uh, foundation or platform to start building your digital twin and then moving into uh, the model based uh, uh, system engineering, integrated program planning and execution, and then uh, the product design and manufacturing, verification management, which really start bringing uh, your test uh, data analysis and CAE, start uh, com- kind of bringing them together. Uh, supply collaboration and management is another key element, as well as the intelligent manufacturing, which gets into digital manufacturing. So product support and management. So these are kind of the, the major uh, kind of building blocks of the Siemens digital threat solutions, which enables digital twins. Okay. Now I, I'm starting to see a recurring theme, right? Um, again, it's back to our previous conversation about PLM. It's not about changing the entire enterprise or entire organization, you start with an area and then you build on top of that, right? Um, so if, if a company or an organization is looking into establishing their digital twin, what's the, what's the right approach? Well, uh, as I mentioned, with, with any success on the major initiative, uh, having a understanding of the business strategies and business objectives and start uh, identify the enablers and digital having a digital strategy is very important. Uh, nowadays, the explosion of the complexity of the product and manufacturing processes, as well as, uh, you know, the, uh, the lead time, the cost of inventory quality and rework, uh, in every company must have a digital strategy. And then, um, uh, when you have that understanding at the, at the, at the executive level, you start putting together a multi-year plan. Uh, how to get there again, not trying to do everything at the same time uh, uh, too fast because that's that's going to be uh, one of the uh, failure points. And then uh, uh, it's very important to either uh, have that uh, roadmap, uh, start with your uh, base PLM platform. And that foundation is something like Siemens uh, Team Center has that rich platform that enables to to start very small and start grow from there and start tying into different disciplines on engineering, manufacturing, analysis, quality, your supplier chain, all that together into the same environment. And it's all, you know, any any organizations nowadays, for many years, they, they're all doing those type of activities, but it's very yeah. disconnected. There are silos. They're not really um, uh, uh, productive in, uh, and efficient in data, how they handle the data and information. And they may be some working on the wrong uh, set of data. Uh, and that's where the, that platform, Team Center platform, the accelerator is going to bring uh, all that connectivity together that you make sure that you kind of grow from there as a small and then start growing to it, uh, moving into digital twin. Yeah. I, I think the exciting thing about the technologies that we have today is that really a startup can truly compete with an established company and an established organization. So right now, I think it's the most exciting time um, in our industry because there are so many new startups leveraging this technology. Uh, and, you know, you, no longer are the day where, oh, you have to be a certain size or you have to have these type of, of uh, resources to be able to compete. Like you can literally compete with the big guys, even as a startup, right? Well, definitely. And then Siemens has brought, uh, introduced, uh, the startup package for the, for the small companies, uh, with a, with a very enormous discount on licensing costs. And then we have a very robust, uh, fast implementation approach, uh, which 
part of our PLM uh, uh, compass roadmap, be able to get a small environment uh, up and running uh, with with the system and and a good training and support after that that uh, that makes the whole journey very uh, uh, easy to implement and deploy. Yeah, um, and we always back come back to this issue, which is resources. It's very difficult to find engineers and, and people right now in the industry. And I think a lot of that has to do with, obviously, you know, the, the older de- generation retiring. And, you know, we need to train more engineer and train more young people to, to get them into the system. Um, how do you think we can attract more um, young people into engineering and into this field? Well, Cybertech for many years, they have a very good relationship with the uh, University of California and Irvine and other universities. And we actually have a very st- a good internship program that we bring engineers um, and, and work with them. And they, they're very talented uh, uh, young engineers that are graduating. And, and then some of them will join Cybertech. And that's where the pipeline that we actually building the pipeline. And then uh, Siemens also has a very uh, strong program with academic universities and they provide uh, all their software applications um, when they donate that to, to companies. And we're working with multiple universities on not only uh, getting team center and solutions out there uh, with CADCAM CAE and also help them out to deploy and get more and more engineers uh, trained in these environments. So they're going to, they're going to be ready to get started uh, in our company, as well as uh, we have a special um, call it a boot camp or a special uh, uh, training called Siemens uh, Inceptor program, which we actually hire young engineers and uh, put them through that program, which is a two months intense program that gets them started with Team Center, um, uh, understanding Team Center installation configuration, and then there is another follow up Team Center associate uh, certification that we follow up with that, which is a self learn. Uh, self-training kind of program which is available online uh with that really start start the, our our resources at a but not no information about team center really got get up to speed and in few months they'll be able to support our, our customers and we of course have a, a very experienced uh, uh, architect which are going to pair up with the younger team center engineers uh, or junior engineers uh, and then uh, build build the um, kind of capacity their capabilities in that uh, in that way. Okay, yeah, that's that sounds like a really good plan. Um, also, you are quite involved with uh, being part of the community and and helping um, you know with people within the community. I know uh, back in Michigan, you did a lot of volunteer work. Um, I think you were part of the Innovate. Uh, organization, I think it's called Innovate NC or Innovate GSO, and then you are also a community ambassador at the, the University of Michigan. So a lot of that groundwork, I think, giving back to the community and giving back to young people and and getting, you know, bringing people together is very important, isn't it? Definitely. I mean, me- mentoring the young engineers, uh, it's always been a passion of mine, uh, either. At the, at the uh, technical level or even uh, at sports or other, other areas. And, and they, we see a lot of talented, uh, uh, young, uh, folks, which are just need, just need a right, right path to be shown to them or, or, or a little bit of advice. And they just, uh, are, are really amazing. Uh, what I see, what the capabilities are. I've seen the students coming uh, on board and uh, in a matter of few months, they're just doing amazing work. So the, the new generation definitely uh, has a lot of potential and I, I love to be able to work with them uh, and be able to uh, 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 share some of my experiences. That's great. Uh, well, Sasan, 30 minutes has gone by. It's, it's gone so <laughs> fast. Anytime I have a, a good conversation, time just seems to fly by. But I do appreciate your time and uh, thank you for being on the podcast today. I really enjoy uh, talking to you. 
And thank you for sharing the, your insight and, and a lot of key information when it comes to PLM and the digital twin. So appreciate your time, Sasan. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Andy, for the opportunity and enjoy, enjoy the session. All right. Sounds thank good. You. Thank you. Go blue, right? <laughs> yeah, go blue. <laughs>